Welcome to Automation's official design competition. In this video you are joining us for the roundtable discussion of the finalist designs in category J, the 2035 concept cars. Your hosts Chris and Rob are joined by today's very special guest and celebrity judge Frank Stephenson. Frank is no less than an automotive design legend, with one of the most prolific and diverse portfolios of any modern automotive designer. He does have a major following on YouTube as well, where he critiques designs both from the real world and from games too. Check out his links below. We'll start by asking our special guest a few questions first and then we'll dive into more in-depth analysis of each finalist in an open roundtable format. Thank you for joining us today, Frank. Before we get looking at our designs today, we'd first like to ask you some questions. And we'll start with, what projects are you excited about working on right now in the design world? I mean, FSD, I guess, Frank Stephenson design is, is fairly new to the game. We're not anything like a Pete Farina or Intel design or anything like that, or, you know, the big Italian studios. But being small, relatively small, I guess, is it makes us work a lot quicker. So you can deliver products and projects a lot quicker than if you have a bigger team. Uh, we can really be known for a certain look or at least a certain philosophy of design. We don't, we don't, we're not spread, you know, so wide apart that we do so many different projects that we've lost any kind of identity of what we do. And we do use biomimicry in everything we do, so that's kind of cool. Um, also, uh, you know, there's, uh, we, we, we were able to start the company with four filters, one being, uh, obviously we want to, uh, create the best in the segment, the best product in the segment. So it's not just competing to, to just offer another product in the segment. It's benchmark anything that's out there. And if the client is willing, we want to be the one to go, the, the product that, you know, is the best in that. It's not necessarily always the most expensive price, really doesn't have a lot to do with it. It's just making it the most desirable product in that segment. And then we're, we're also looking to be, uh, Innovative because that that makes you relevant. If you if you're not relevant or if you're not innovative, you're not cutting edge in terms of materials, in terms of what your design does, then you you're really not standing out or providing any benefit actually. So we're always uh, shooting to bring some new element into the design that doesn't exist. Um, that's kind of the philosophy we've always had in the car industry at the top end, where you always you don't want to follow anybody. You want to be the one that other companies go and say, why didn't we think of that? You know, oh, damn it, no way play catch up. Another one was, uh, we got to think about, obviously we got to think about sustainability much more than ever before. Putting that in as one of our filters is, is quite important. And then also the last one being that we, uh, we don't want to do, um, trendy design, I guess you could call it, you know, people get influenced or designers typically get influenced by, I don't know, architecture, furniture, fashion, all that kind of stuff. But that, that kind of influences in and out. It doesn't last very long. It's very you know, trendy, I guess you could say. Whereas biomimicry, which is what I, I was talking about earlier, is, is long lasting design. It's love at first sight. There are very few things in nature that are not attractive simply because they're naturally uh, designed. You know, there's a principles to that but uh, it's a science proportions um but yeah it's, if you can think about how a product would be designed if nature designed it then that's kind of the best influence i think also for performance and efficiency and less is more kind of uh, philosophy it really works really well so we most of the projects were all of them actually all the projects we've been working on in the last uh, three years now it's, it's pretty much all of them are in that direction and uh, yeah, we're just finishing off a project which we're waiting to take off, uh, uh, no pun intended, but it should happen next year, which are the first two cars that are going to race on the south pole of the moon. Um, we have two slots booked on SpaceX to launch them up there. Um, it's, uh, it's an education, partly an education program for students uh, around the world as well as being obviously led by NASA and some of their their contractors that work on, on the Luna Rover program. So in 2024, 
uh, NASA is going back to the moon. It's called the mm -hmm. Artemis Artemis mission. It's not Apollo anymore, and yep. uh, the capsule's called Orion. But uh, they'll be taking up a lunar rover this time that has to go further and faster than, than ever before. They've got three astronauts are taking up, and they want the, the uh, that vehicle they're going to be using to be as obviously as advanced as they can make it. So these two cars are pretty much the prototypes for that that final vehicle. And that race is going to be uh, beamed back to Earth so we can all wear our VR goggles and watch the race live as it happens. It's a 12-hour long endurance race on the circuit around the moon, electric cars, and uh, no, aer no aerodynamics involved. <laughs> it's stay on the ground, and if you flip over, they have to be able to flip back over, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, it's a real exercise in... Uh, lightweight materials obviously keeping it as light as possible it costs a million euros to send one kilo to the moon so they have to make them weigh as little as possible hmm. and then it's also uh latency issues you know it takes three and a half seconds to send a signal to the moon and hope that vehicle on the moon turns uh, and then you know three and a half seconds later after that so seven seconds later you'll know if the car did what it's supposed to do so those are all bugs that are being worked out. There's dust filtration, there's charge things with the uh, electrics, um, center of gravity issues, tire and traction issues. But they look really cool. They don't look like something you would want to have on Earth, but on the moon they make perfect sense. And uh, it should be fun to see these things zipping around, you know, 12 hours. And they look, they got, they have the same technology underneath the skin. They're both pretty, pretty identical. The wheels are different, tires and wheels are different, and the bodies are different, but basically it's the same kind of vehicle, just to see if if they can break it. Whatever breaks, they'll know what, what they have to fix and improve on for the, uh, the, the final mission, I guess. And as well as that, they're obviously going to be testing them before they send them to the moon uh, on a private circuit, just in Florida, can't tell you exactly where, but uh, and have uh, two astronauts on the ISS racing the cars from the International Space Station on this track in Florida to work out the bugs. So, <laughs> but you won't see that on television. It's just a replica track. And if, uh, should be launching either at the very end of this year, the tail end, or at the very beginning of next year. It's actually it's ready, and they're just going through a few more uh, marketing things with the websites and all that kind of stuff. But it's the world's safest infant car seat. Uh, mm -hmm. baby car seat and uh, it's pretty amazing because what you don't hear about is it, but if you research it you'll find out but is the number of small children up to six years old are sitting in these child seats that are available obviously on the market now that get killed in minor shunts minor accidents from the rear side front they're buckled in as per required uh, by legislation, you know, the seat belts and the seats are all uh, perfect and everything. But it doesn't take a lot, a lot to kill a small baby in a, in a shunt, even though they are buckled in like that. And it's all down to the fact that the seat itself doesn't, doesn't absorb the energy that the impact transmits through the impact, right? So what was really interesting, I, I, I'm probably talking too much now, but this is pretty cool. This is going to save a lot of lives. Uh, the Israeli defense, uh, they put a lot of effort into research and development. Most defense forces around the world do that anyways. But what they did out in Israel was uh, they had this problem of all their armored vehicles going over landmines. And, you know, they'd hit an explosion or whatever, and the vehicle would just, you know, pop up five feet in the air and land. And it was fine, it's an armored vehicle, but inside everybody was killed and all the soldiers inside, you know, lined up in the back, sitting down, they would die. So they developed a technology of a very, it's quite simple, it's made, like anything that's really good is it's quite simple, but it has this amazing effect of being able to absorb a huge amount of G-force or energy, basically. And this device is bolted into each seat uh, where somebody's uh, a soldier sitting. So now what happens is that that IEU, the uh, explosive device, um, IEU, IED, sorry, goes off, and and now that energy is absorbed before it gets into the uh, to the to the soldier, and now everybody's being saved instead of dying. So they've solved this 
technology obviously off to the US and to Germany and Japan and Russia they all use this this new safety thing but and the result is obviously pretty pretty positive it's very positive so now they said where can we bring this out into the commercial world and the the best solution was you know baby seats because it's it's that's you know again it's like one of those strange pieces of data that you don't they don't want to tell you that a certified seat is still not good enough to save babies lives sitting in the car in in minor impacts not in major impacts obviously that's worse but um and if you start researching it they haven't moved on in terms of technology materials anything uh in baby seats for decades so now we've designed this seat form uh well for the market now that has this technology in it and it's getting figures like 70% almost 70% high 60s safer than the safest baby car seat on the market to me it's that if you're having a baby and you want to package them up in the back of the car you're going to feel guilty if you don't put them in one of these seats <laughs> you know and uh you know, babies are are going to be here forever and they're your most prized possession as we say so why wouldn't you and the seat isn't crazy expensive it's at the high end obviously but it's not the most expensive baby car seat on the market and uh yeah it's shaped kind of like an egg for the reason why an egg is shaped like an egg but yeah the seat's pretty cool i'm really excited about it cuz it, it will be a lifesaver in terms of you know it's not just another product it's to bring in some good finally uh doing watches which are really cool too we're doing a uh, not just an air watch we're doing an outer space watch which is really cool uh, we're doing a deep sea watch and we're doing a all terrain sort of uh, combat sort of you know land watch i guess you could call it uh, we're going big time with with the metaverse in terms of we're not just developing products we're developing a whole environment to to showcase the products as well as offering within this uh vec as harry called it a uh, vehicle experience center education courses um panel discussions with top people in their field primarily design obviously we're going to have panel discussions with them we'll have new product launches from the industry in there so you can be able to see everything uh virtually obviously but that's the way we can communicate with everybody and you know I understand that's one of the reasons why you're interested in in talking with us about this our, our 2035 concept in the first place was that it's uh, there's a real tie in with with that project that you you're going on and that you know yeah. it's it's the same kind of time frame Yeah, yeah, well 2030 it's always hard I didn't, you know, back when I was studying I was thinking gosh, you know, I was in the eight, mid 80s I was thinking, wow, I have to design a car from 1994. What does that even look like? Is it going to, you know, <laughs> is this thing going to be flying, you know? And and I did a 1994 concept which for me was so far out there when I looked at it, I thought this will never be made. I look at it now and it looks so old, you know? It's like gosh what i'm trying to say is it's hard to put a realistic um you know you say 2035 none of us really know what's going to come in 2035 we can only think we know and try to head in that direction but there's so much that can happen between now and then that you know it, it could surprise us or it could look boring you know boringly similar to what we have on the road today so it's interesting to see what the guys approach to what they see as young generate as a young generation what 2035 looks to them to them it's a lot further off than 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 older people because 2035 is like well that's pretty close to to death anyway so you know to see what <laughs> young generation want to be driving if that's the way they've drawn it or designed the products what i would like to be in in 2035 that that's cool that would be cool definitely So maybe we could just have a a quick look at some of what we've come up with here and maybe do a little bit of scoring on those. Okay, so here's our first finalist. You see what happens here is they start loving the past, but uh they see it in a much more uh customized way than 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 what we've ever done. I mean this is this is actually a customized uh you know could be anything but customized Cadillac or Eldorado whatever. Um 
but it's pretty cool. It's got a real uh, sort of a, I hate the word retro. I just despise the word retro, but it's kind of like uh, harks back to that period when, when cars were just, you know, law. There was, there, it was all about excess in the, in the day, excess. And nowadays it's about minimalism, but it's beautiful. A really nice controlled surfaces. Um, there's a few things obviously I would change. Uh, flat windscreens are kind of the cheap way of doing a car, whereas this car looks expensive and you would complex curved glass, as we call it. In other words, in 2035, glass is going to have moved on so long, glass technology, that you'll probably not even need pillars. Like he's got an A pillar, a B pillar, and a C pillar. And that's like, that's been there forever. I would, I would rather see a car like this, even with its body style, which is, like I said, reminiscent of a bit of the past, with a much more futuristic canopy, which where the glass actually is part of the structure. In other words, you don't have those blind spots. Body is fine. There's nothing wrong with the body. It's got suicide doors in the back. You can see where the front, the, the door handle is. Um, uh, it's it's obviously ride adjustable because you would never ride a car like that, drive a car like that uh, in the city. So in a way, it's it's kind of traditional. There's no, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect uh, doors in 2035 to look like that. I would I would expect the door. It's a conventional door, front and back. I mean, the only thing there is, like I said, the suicide opening door in the rear but that's not even new that, that's been done forever um i would i would, not even say going doors or dihedral opening doors or anything like that i would just rather see a door that just sort of maybe hinged up and folded on itself so that you could actually not worry about the door flipping too high up in the air you know uh, so it hinges at the belt line as we say they, they it's a beautiful car i'm not saying it's not Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. I would love to drive something like this. I just think uh, that hint of too much uh, reminiscent of the past is is probably not making this car that relevant as a as a new car in 2035. You know, this is almost like a guy who loves cars and wants to uh, bring back the past. You know, the Prowler. Remember the Prowler and uh, sure do. the Chrysler? They kind of had that. That's kind of like what this is. The Prowler came out new. You know, it wasn't an old car. But if you look at it, you think, oh, this car's been around, uh, influenced from the past. That's the, that's the feeling I get from here. And I do love old designs. I do love them because I think they had a lot more freedom back in the day. They weren't so, so, so they, they weren't regulated as tightly as they are today in terms of producing cars. and. Uh, you know, it's kind of, what do we call these things, lead sleds, kind of like really long and heavy and looking low, but yep. that's just the appearance, which is cool. So this one is number two. Where's the front? Uh, <laughs> this is the front. <laughs> there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, there's a lot going on this thing. Yeah, yeah you probably discover something every day of the week if you bought this car. Month, a year. <laughs> Still be looking at it after a year, dude. I never saw this. Wow. Oh yeah, this is. I mean, I wouldn't say this is 2035. I'd say this is probably 2050 or something. Maybe. Um, it's quite cool. I mean, it's definitely not your. Sunday afternoon, let's go for a drive, family, get the dog and get the grandmother and mother-in-law and all the children into the car. This is definitely a sports car um, with very interesting sort of uh, space-influenced aerodynamics, you know, kind of like coming back into the atmosphere kind of uh, aerodynamics, you know, put on those air brakes, just slow this baby down. Um, yeah, it's quite unconventional this but this is this is kind of what i was expecting to see from somebody who's dreaming about becoming a car designer this is something that you know uh doesn't exist 
it could exist if he worked or this guy was working for Mattel or some company that, you know, did, this is not even Hot Wheels. This is way past Hot Wheels. This, this isn't even 2077 or any of the games right now. We had, uh, there, there were some car, what was that game? I talked about it last week, Cyber Formula back in the mid nineties. I don't know if you guys know that one. They were kind of crazy. They weren't as crazy as this, but they were pretty crazy. But this kind of comes from an era where <clears throat> guy definitely was thinking out of the box. That's that's what's cool about this. It doesn't look like he was influenced by anything on the road today. He just went out and did something. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it from a sense that perhaps it's not an existing car company from today. It's probably a Chinese or a Korean or, or one of those Far East companies that comes up with a design language that doesn't exist today. So it allows them to the freedom to do something that is quite unique from a design point of view. And they're carving themselves out a niche, a niche in the market to create something that appeals to the guys who are just being born now, basically, or not being born, they've maybe been around for a few years. But um, that's definitely, definitely something that is an acquired taste over something traditional, like a Ferrari today, for example. You know, this doesn't look like a Ferrari in the future. It doesn't look like any Porsche or any Aston Martin or anything like that. It's a brand new design language for a company that probably is just either getting off their feet now or starting or hasn't started yet. So it allows them to have the freedom to do something that, like I said, creates their own design language. Cool. This one is a little bit more grounded than than the last one. Yeah, very grounded. Uh, more than grounded, uh, it looks like it could be on the road today. That's the thing. It's, it, I guess you could say it's grounded in that sense. Yeah, it's this guy has his has his reality boots. Uh, he's not. Well, the thing is, it's the guy's vision of 2035. So if it's, if it's his vision, it's his vision. You can't say that's not 2035. And there are a lot of companies doing this kind of very angular, almost origami type, uh, very sharp edges. And then there's a bit of softness in some areas, but basically it's more of a graphic approach rather than a sort of a form approach. It's more... Kind of using colors and stuff to hide shapes and create shapes, uh, right? But it's like it's quite confusing I, I don't understand why like you said yeah graphics i don't understand why that that black comes down off the tail deck the deck in the rear and goes halfway into the rear door what is that because it looks cool or is that pop art or some weird thing right it, it, you got to really love the, it is a love it or hate it and, and for me I, I don't like that kind of design i think everybody should kind of it, it's maybe aggressive and uh, angry it doesn't look friendly to me it's not like a car would walk up to it and say me and you are going home you know that kind of thing. that's um, very interesting that you point that out um if you turn to the uh, pure back view um uh, would you say the same thing when you just see that no no absolutely not. no exactly I, I thought it's much, a yeah. car from behind and in a way it's kind of modern looking but then it's got like Two bulges, black bulges on the side and the rear. Why? Mm. Um, then it's got sort of a diffuser plate on the bottom. So is it a sports car? Is... Yeah, this gives me the feeling that there were a couple <clears throat> designers, or at least a couple, maybe a few designers working on this project. And they didn't like each other, so each one did one part of the car, and they didn't talk to each other and didn't want to talk to each other. So uh, it's hard to it's hard to see this as a design language that you could improve in in the next model all you would do would change is change the angle of lines you know again i don't see anything really innovative in terms of making the the engineer sweat in 2035 to make this you know it's not like an engineer is going to look at this and go damn i don't know how we're going to make this car Yeah, Koenigsegg. <laughs> no, it's not Koenigsegg. Ooh, ah, okay. It's very much an electric car. There's obviously no engine in it. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. or it's kind of one liter, <laughs> single cylinder, with a little range extender. But it, yeah. would, it wouldn't be called Electra if it was uh, just purely a combustion engine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see the exhaust on it, so there isn't really. So it's kind of it's cool and weird at the same time. It's kind of like the two rear wheels are like attached. It's I've never seen anything like it. So that in that sense, it's cool. There's it's kind of like no back end to the car. I mean, there is a back end, but there's no back end. <laughs> it's like where the middle of the back of the car go. It's gone. It's kind of like a. Uh, what are those three-wheeled uh, motorcycles called? Where they, <laughs> you know, like Harleys, but the guys have, have have two wheels in the back. It's a trike. Tri yeah. yeah. Oh, tri yeah. Kind of like a trike rear end. Okay, so this guy's obviously is emphasizing aero on this car because uh, a massive intake on the front. It's not an intake. It's a it's a wing because there's no really no radiator that would work like that. I think so. He's basically trying to push air in underneath the, the bonnet or the hood and then take it up over the windscreen so it's got this pushing down effect um, and then he's done something like what the Aston Martin Valhalla or the Valhalla or the Valkyrie I think the Valkyrie and, actually the Valkyrie might have that yeah where they separate the, the front wheel from the, not separate it but they open up the air passage through there so it's got a lot of aero going on so yeah, that's pretty cool uh, the only thing I think that kind of doesn't work i mean i understand he's done it but it could have been probably done in, in a slightly different way it's the kind of way he's covered the rear wheel it doesn't really match the design of the car kind of it's uh the car is all sinuous and, and curvy and sensual all that kind of stuff and then he's got these fenders on the rear wheels that kind of look like something you'd see on a sidecar so, you know motorcycles uh side sidecar thing. It's actually it's cool. I think I think uh, it would look a lot more exciting if it wasn't in white, for example. I mean, white's a kind of cool color nowadays for race cars and things, but or sports cars. I think car would look a lot more exciting if it was perhaps in a in a different color than this. It's uh, and not black, definitely not black, because black would hide that contrast it has with with the black itself. So, if it was perhaps a silver or or a little metallic red or something like that, could be really cool. So, um, but I like it. I, I, I like the creativity on it. It does look something quite out of this generation. So it's a generation jump for sure. If any, any exists. So when I first saw it and that flat sort of header line on the windscreen kind of does what Koenigsegg does. They have very flat, almost, uh, it's just like curved in one direction kind of thing on Koenigsegg, the glass. It kind of look like that, but this, if, if Koenig Zag is around in 2035, you can imagine something close to this could perhaps be a direction or uh, could be, not will be or anything, but. Yeah. Poster. This guy's from Japan, obviously. No, <laughs> it's probably from somewhere else and i'd like to see where what what furniture this guy has in his apartment or his house okay it looks very japanese in in terms of you know there are some companies that are remember the nissan cube and those cars that are less squared than this obviously but still looking quite square um <clears throat> I see this more as a utility vehicle, more than a personally owned vehicle, something that companies would buy to maximize the uh, the cargo space or the efficiency of, of packaging and things like that. Not because it, you can't look at this and say it's a beautiful car. You'd say it's a product. It's kind of like somebody who, who doesn't really design cars would design this. It would come from somebody who's more into I wouldn't even say architecture or furniture, but it's definitely somebody who's into more like a product type of design field. Um, it's 100% symmetrical, front to, front to back, left to right. There's not much uh, symmetrical, not not the graphic. Obviously, the graphic is what changes a little bit. But <clears throat> where was it? San Francisco Airport. I arrived, and you just get into a pod. Basically, in the pod, 
takes you wherever you're going, no driver. But yeah, this is not something, I mean, that's what lets it down, exactly that. It's it's a service vehicle or something, you know, that you're not going to go to a dealership and say, Daddy, Daddy, let's buy this car, Daddy, it's, a, it's the hottest thing on wheels. But in that sense, if it's going to be designed for that type of environment, you wouldn't, you, he's made it really difficult for ingress, egress. He's made it difficult for visibility outwards. If it's a sightseeing vehicle, you're blocking the vision. Uh, the steering wheel obviously dates it. Um, there's a lot that can be done to improve it. Um, not sure the roof is, I guess the roof's open too. So you got sort of an upward vision thing, but it basically cars. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't want to hurt the guy. But <laughs> well, so I, I said the same thing. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're two yeah. already and I have look, much less uh, cr credentials. So. <laughs> yeah, Rob was especially harsh on this in judging. For oh sure. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I called it a dystopian nightmare. <laughs> it's kind of like Freddie Flintstone going modern, but it's not modern. Like it's like, <laughs> okay, we got this thing. Now let's build a modern one that's a box. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is more like an Apple car. Here we go. Yeah. Actually, it's more like a toy, isn't it? This is something more... Hmm. It's cute. <laughs> it's not aggressive. This is uh, Sunai. Kinai or Sunai? Kinai. There's this one, one detail in there which I, uh, which really made it warm to my heart, and it is, um, it has the contraption up in front which kind of mimics a steering wheel, but when you look at it, it's just a nav set which navigates you to where you want to go. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't see that. I saw something round there, but I wasn't sure what it was. Um, okay, so basically you're just sitting. Well, in that sense, it's good because visibility, you don't have to do anything except talk to your passenger and, or the other person. and enjoy the trip it's obviously autonomous then um mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's cute i don't know how easy it is to get it looks uh there's no shut lines on it so i'm not sure how you get into the car um i guess if you have a door but it's not there get into it. i mean imagine this you bought this for your grandmother and your grandfather and then they said we can't get into it <laughs> no chance <laughs> <laughs> when we sit in it the, the belt line the waistline is up by our shoulders there's just no way i'm gonna get up out of it once i'm in it so i, I think this is uh this really kind of fits in as a i envision it as an archetypal car that is um put into high-tech cities uh, for uh -huh. tourists to go and explore the good parts of town and yeah. um they they will be spending um very little energy on on the driving and extreme amounts of energy on keeping the passengers non-fried so <laughs> well yeah yeah the ultraviolets and all that but you probably have some kind of tint or something um yeah it's more like i i see this more as almost like um like those bikes that you see around town that you can just get on or a scooter or something you can just get onto it and use it or it takes you somewhere or whatever it's not really a a vehicle that you would buy as you know my first car is this or i'm gonna buy this for my child to go off to the university or anything like that this is this is uh another car that's probably bought by the city uh for people just to get into or tourists like you said to get into and enjoy a, a tourist trip um in that sense it looks cheap easy to repair obviously it has to be relatively safe with the with the canopy and visibility so it's a funny shape it's it's a it's a cute shape it's a, it's a shape that yeah people draw when they're learning to draw <laughs> wheels body in the middle um enough clearance for the head that's one of the round wheels Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I, this is something that um, 
I mean, this is a car of, you know, 10 years ago, this would look futuristic probably today. It looks normal, kind of like Tesla-ish or Audi-ish or Polestar-ish maybe. Um, it's it's uh, <clears throat> it's clean, it's clean. It's uh, maybe Tesla should look at this for the next model that they're doing or something. Not the Cybertruck, the uh, S or something maybe. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's it's not again. It's not groundbreaking. It's not something I hope we see in 2035 because it's not far enough out there, you know, to be in 2035. That's 2035 is a long ways away. Actually, if we really think about it, there's, well, there's nothing creative about it. That's the problem. It's just there's again nothing that looks impossible to do today. So is that creative? Probably not. It's pretty, but it's not creative. So. It's probably less creative, actually, than the one we just saw, because the one we saw was you know, kind of a fresh, how do you do that kind of thing. Whereas this, you're looking at it, there's like that, no no difficult parts for an engineer to figure out. You can just look at it and say, yeah, we'll, we'll get on with it and have it ready for you pretty soon. Same person? Another different guy. person this time oh white's popular then that's cool okay no points for the seeds i've seen those before <laughs> uh here we need to explain one thing there there is a technical flaw with this one and that Ooh. is that um the the windshield is a so-called one-sided material in the game and if you view it from behind, it just um, takes it away. So as if it wasn't there. So what you oh, see in the windshield is what that is going on. The other cars had solutions for that, other solutions for it. But okay. um, this one is struggling with that technical detail. Okay, that's that's a cool feat there, actually. Yeah, you can almost say the car doesn't have glass unless a fly hits it and the fly looks like it's just hovering in the air. <laughs> that, would be, that would be funny. It's not moving, <laughs> or a bird hits the windscreen, and all you see is the bird, not the windscreen. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody, somebody, a drunk, somebody, uh, you hit somebody, and they're just floating in the car. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> cool. Uh, this is like a little barquetta, then, isn't it? Yeah. The back end doesn't do it for me, but the front was. Front and side are kind of cool. Front has got sort of an old, um, old eighties uh, uh, Corvette concept feel to it. You remember the what did they call those Corvettes back then? They had a very aero sort of plan view, top view. When you look down on them, it's kind of like massive chin spoiler, very pointed center uh, up to the center line of the hood, of the bump, yeah, the hood. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, part of the lights shine through the material or something that like, could be cool if that's what he means yeah uh, yeah in a way this could be a sort of uh you know it depends on the motorization of the engine and all that but it could be something like a a miata mx what do you call them mx5 in the states right for for the 2030 or something where you basically you're just going to shell over a nice platform uh, windscreen is weird, but again, it's not, not the purpose of that. Um, I was thinking the other day, we used to need roll bars on things. Nowadays, it's like nobody puts a roll bar on their car anymore. You know, on the, on the cars like these. Oh, they have uh, pop-up ones, right? Well, Mercedes did that once with a pop-up. I remember the ESL. You, if you achieved a certain degree of inclination of the car... Right roll bar automatically popped up but a lot of cars today don't seem to have roll bars I don't know they... okay um i kind of like this i don't know why but i think it's just basically the overall profile of it it's kind of fast you know it looks like it's it's you stopped it in its tracks it wants to keep moving so it's pretty dynamic although that bronze the, the top line of the bronze is horizontal to the ground it should probably look better if it was like slightly angled forward so it looked like it was leaning doesn't do that really too much there but i 
Okay. Oh, this changed. Yeah. Gosh, these guys are all expecting really nice roads in 2031. Yeah. <laughs> no potholes, nothing. Just beautiful. <laughs> uh, it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a funny card to me. <laughs> you know, drag car, drag. You know those. Yeah, yeah, uh, funny cars. Yeah, yeah. Funny yeah, like a, a top like a pro mod kind of car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, it's a fiberglass body. You just uh, pivot up from the rear wheel and, and hold front end of the car. <laughs> front of the car goes up. Mm. Yeah, it's got a stock car feel to it. It's almost it's very almost muscly muscle carish, isn't it? Um, kind of hard to figure out, but. Yeah, he's done the rear wheel where it's popped out, sort of got a really wide track in the rear, and then uh, he's got this like um, uh, just a cover over the rear wheel, just like skidding. Flare or oh, arch, yeah. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the rear, the front wheel's just got a little lip at the back there. Uh, graphics are weird. That black thing down there would probably look better if it didn't even have that black graphic. Uh, there was a car used to, they used to call the, it still exist called Bricklin. B R I C K L I N. That's a weird one. Kind of like yeah, that. I know those. Remember those? Kind I of, sure do. Uh, a friend of mine actually had one. Ah, can you see what I'm seeing? Does it kind of have that feel? It does. Like the way that the, the, the sort of front wheel arches are kind of prominent there. and Yeah. It, it really does have that sort of that safety vehicle feel, yeah. as they called it. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the States right now, aren't you? Canada. That's Our actually Canada. where they built them in, in New Brunswick, in Canada, out in the Maritimes. Ooh, okay. I didn't know you'd have a Brickman over there. But in, in a certain sense, it's cool. It's got sort of a long tail feel to it, which is kind of a very short front overhang, long rear overhang. So it's kind of got that, that uh, arrow look, almost kind of teardrop look to it, sort of in profile. I wouldn't say it's a great design because there's, there's, it's hard to understand some of the features on it. It's very crude that's the word for it crude you know very rough kind of like the guy built the car himself in in his garage or something so on to the last one good where is that it's it a bit, a bit out there <laughs> yes <laughs> oh that's pretty cool You're going to tell me this is a car or a boat? <laughs> well, it doesn't have wheels, so I'm a little skeptical about uh, it being uh, a car. Uh, what do you call it? Levitation? It sort of just hovers above the ground? In the, in the animatic, I think you could see that there weren't any wheels there. Not even I suppose. conceptually. It looks like a boat, yeah. <laughs> a luxury boat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, serenity. Serenity, yeah. That's definitely <laughs> a boat name, isn't it? <clears throat> Sounds like a boat name, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be bad if we said it, uh, it's a boat, and then he goes back and tells us, no, that was a car, guys, I tried to be innovative. You know, you see all <laughs> this stuff all the time. I came from a different angle. <laughs> Uh-oh, sorry. Well, nobody else would criticize us because that thing looks like, I mean, we have to say that's a boat. How are you going to say it's a car? Um, it's an autonomous boat, is what, unless it goes the other way. The seats are facing back. See that? Yeah, and the yeah. Uh, there's a red the tail light on the um, where the seats are facing back as well. So, oh my gosh, this is right around there. I think it's a, a kind of like set up like a trike, but uh, the, the wrong way around. So two wheels front, um, or well, there are no wheels, but there would be. Um, so yeah, kind of like a Can Am spider. How oh, much yeah. you want to bet this is a car and this is not a boat? Because <laughs> what was that Rolls Royce they did? They did a little concept Rolls Royce. It was, I mean, obviously it was going. You can tell which direction it was going, but it did something like that. It had this really strange uh, front, covered front wheels. It wasn't the one that was done for Justin Bieber. It was the actual Rolls Royce from the factory concept vehicle. Really long. It, felt, it looked like it was a carriage, like a old style influenced by a carriage. Uh, you know, horse-drawn carriages or something where you sit way in the back and horses were out in the front kind of feel. I bet you, yeah, that's got to be a car now, I think. 
influenced by a boat. Definitely. Do you agree? Yeah, it's a human station on the front. Well, in front, in the in front of the driver's passenger seat or whatever they are. He's got yeah. some kind of instrumentation going on there. You're right. The red light would go in the back. The white light goes in the front. Well, definitely high on creativity because the guy's high on creativity. Or you can just leave out the creativity and just say it was high and <laughs> it was very high on creativity. <laughs> What a sexy beast this is. I think this has a beautiful presence, but what I really think is a little lacking in this is um, the front headlights. It makes, makes the car so unbelievably evil looking. I can't get over that fact. Like compare that front, and especially the straight front view, to the straight back view. Like this, this, the little evil eyes in there versus the back view. I mean, the back is just so elegant, so nicely crafted. And then the front, keeping that same style in everything but the headlights. I think a more conventional uh, set of headlights here would have done magic for this design. And overall, I really just love it. It has such great presence and just beef on the road. Yeah, this design has really awesome presence overall, I'd say. Um, I'm not really sure that having it as low as it is and with wheels as big as this is makes it kind of a practical car. I mean, I don't think I would want to be, certainly not want to be driving around any major like city streets or whatnot with a what I'm assuming is going to be a turning radius similar to a super tanker. But yeah, this is generally a, well, a very well-crafted build. I like how they took the time when they in their side moldings to have all the door cutouts in there properly so there's it's nice and consistent looking uh, i will agree with you rob though that the, the front end is almost comically evil and comically sort of squinting and angry looking it's 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 maybe even a bit too much especially in comparison to the rear where it's it's very nice and clean and, and tidy so one thing i noticed here is that there isn't any place to place your number plates um so that has to be considered in the cleanliness that you're seeing Maybe they are aiming for a time where everything is done via some kind of uh, barcode that is being scanned on, on the roof or whatever. I don't know. But uh, 2035 isn't that far away. But yeah, I, I think the, um, the design overall is just excellent. Uh, and the front, just such a letdown. Suicide doors, pretty cool but uh, oh one thing that i noticed which i find really uh, appealing as well is the wheel wells and how they are shaped um to uh, towards the back that they both have this flowy uh, especially in this pr straight on side view you see that then there's this this really good flow to them and especially in the rear really love that look yeah that's the way this body is designed is it's got very nicely shaped wheel arches and, and the way that the this entry has been designed, they, they really have been accentuated in a nice way, I'd have to say. I also like how the interior just kind of shows up and, and pokes through in kind of an inobtrusive way, but still illustrates that, you know, there is something going on there and it, it feels very believable. So one thing that I'm noticing here is those extremely strong lines on the hood, uh, which start to disappear more and more the more you turn the car to the side view. and. I think they are almost a little too strong there in the straight up front view, although that gives the car a lot of beef in <laughs> in, in the rear view mirror when you have that thing behind you. Um, while from the side it slowly turns elegant, and but still with great presence. And then from the rear it's just pure elegance. Oh well, there we have it. <laughs> this has been going around the automation community for quite a while. And it is still just as astonishing and absolutely brilliant as ever. Because, I mean, this, this is something that just shouldn't quite be possible in automation. There is so much craftsmanship going into this. And all the detail and making all those extras that the car, that any car body doesn't even have to start with, make them look that smooth and deliberate, that is a masterpiece in, in its own regard. I mean, this car is really far out there, and I think with the configuration that we see here, with all the air brakes out, um, it is 
even too busy looking for what it wants to be here. It, it it's kind of saps that elegance that this car also has, very much so, when it is in its, um, let's say, not time attack uh, brake mode uh, that we see right here. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this is... <laughs> I mean, what more do you say about this other than this is an absolute masterclass? I even go as far as to say that this is the high watermark of automation cars that I've seen. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds of cars over the year. And, and this is just, it's on a whole new level from anything I've ever seen before. There's just, you can sit down and you can look at a part of it and you'll see things, even if you have, you've been looking at it for days or weeks or months, there's going to be something new to look at. And that's really cool. And I should also mention to to those who are or maybe looking at this and getting a little discouraged that this is a result of two people working for probably at least 100 hours each on designing this car. So this is so far beyond, you know, just a, a simple build. And you know, if you're thinking, oh, I could never do something like that. Well, it's you can take some comfort in the fact that it's probably our two most prodigious automotive automation players, at least that I know of getting in involved together and in designing something it's just it was deliberately made to be absolutely over the top and i mean they've succeeded at it i mean look at this thing it's crazy so let's nitpick a little bit like how would you continue to improve this thing if you could what i would like to point out from the straight front view is that um the headlight solution here seems overdone and a little bit too much out there. I don't think that was quite necessary with how it wraps around the bottom. That to me takes away a bit of the um, racing feel and makes it more gimmicky looking, which I don't think is the intent of it. It is, I believe, supposed to look like a futuristic time attack car and those elements down there with the lamps on it, I don't think that gels really well. Um, then, yeah, well, I, I, I don't don't even know. Is that the only thing I can point out? What can you point out, Chris? I think the taillights are maybe a little bit of an afterthought as well. Like, I kind of get where they're coming from with that, but they kind of have shapes and a design motif that isn't really shared anywhere else in the vehicle. The, the line that runs over the side pod and then down over where the rear wheels are is... It's not really a shape that kind of repeats in the rest of the car, but... I mean, from an automation perspective, it's, there's nothing you can say in terms of the, the, con the construction of this. This is just a masterclass in, in every respect. So, um, uh, one, one final open question I would like to ask. Would this thing actually work in BeamNG? Oh, I don't think there's any chance that it would work. without Not without probably another 100 or 200 hours of fussing around with J-beams and getting your steering angle right and setting your suspension up and and then of course strengthening all the things that are attached to this so they don't immediately fall off the moment the car moves for the first time so with this one i i, I actually quite liked the uh, the general theme with it it doesn't seem to be all too much too too far out there but i like the kind of motif that is going on in the front grille because that could be that is very much hinting at a fully electric vehicle and uh, you could have playful things going on with that, with signaling and um, could have kind of light show stuff or whatever uh, fancy parking modes you have or when it's um, completely autonomously driven, whatever. But I think that the, uh, the use of light, of highlighting in terms of light around the car, uh, also from the side view and so on, is done really quite well. It does look futuristic, but not too far out there. The only thing that I really think is weird is how the car from the rear doesn't look like the car from the front necessarily. The car from the rear is a little bit more bulgy and um, blobby uh, compared to the sides, which have more, much more rectangular shapes. And I I quite like the, the lines on the sides, but yes it is uh, an inconsistency yeah i tend to agree that this is this has some interesting ideas and certainly in comparison to the second finalist this is a, a much more believable car for a 2035 concept which is it sounds like it's at the time of recording that it's a long ways away but realistically there are probably actual designs you know here in 2022 that are 
are being worked on that will be on the road in 2035 as a new car. So this is definitely towards the, the believable side of the spectrum. I will agree that I, I do quite like the the front headlight treatment. That's really quite cool with the, the unified light bar and, and also the treatment of the grill too is, is really kind of interesting and and creative. But I think from the sides, it's just too... It reminds me of like Dazzle camouflage, like they experimented with on ships in World War I, World War II. Just to, as if they're trying to hide the shape of this thing with these strange sort of lightning zigzag patterns that don't really seem to repeat anywhere else in the car. Um, I also am not really, I'm not super keen on how the roof has been handled with the, where it looks like the, the roof line is just completely floating over the body. I would have either had it attach to the rest of the white bodywork and the lower part of the car at one end, probably at the front more than likely, or I would have just completely made it black and, and had a completely hidden roof line. It's a little bit jarring otherwise. I very much do like the consistency of the tail light compared to the um, to the headlight. That that is exactly the same style. This big bar, and it's so nicely implemented. It goes all the way around and um, sticks out just the right amount from the rear. It's looking good, almost a bit like like a wing um, when it would be lit, I guess. But uh, yeah, overall, it's it's a really solid design with lots of good ideas that has some inconsistencies, really. Ah uh, yes, I um, I, I think this is this is pretty well suited for a 2035 hypercar esque build, as hopefully battery technology has been uh, lifted a few levels because that would very much be needed to keep those not weigh from from weighing 500 tons basically, um, and this seems to be a purely electric hypercar. And I do think it's it's a little odd that it looks perfectly normal modern hypercar from the front, from the straight front. Almost, you could say. Almost. With a few, a few tweaks in there. Um, I like the eyes that uh, have been shaped out here. And it does look like there is a bit more Formula One inspired aerodynamics going on there. But then once you turn it to the sides, it gets more UFO-like. <laughs> Uh, I do like the shape of the the main cabin, the, the tub, and how it's extremely aerodynamic towards the rear. And then it gets a little too odd when you spin it all around and it makes it, makes it look like a... Uh, what would that be? Some kind of rover or something futuristic um, that's driving on different planets. What do you think about that? Kind of reminds me of one of those sort of, I think it's called the Aptera, the solar car that has been sort of in and out of the news and in and out of trouble uh, financially and, and technically over the years. It's got this sort of this weird teardrop kind of shape to it. It's it's an interesting design for sure. And I really, I like how it's this thing. It's, you can tell right away that the designer of this thought aerodynamics first, second and third, and then everything else, even passenger comfort, cabin space was just a an afterthought almost it's a really cool idea um yeah I mean, you can tell that it's it has to be electric based on the fact that there's really no place you could put an, an engine in a classical sense in this car but there are some a little bit few odd choices here for all the details and for all of the the little thoughts that was put into this just having the the automation default rear pushrod suspension hanging out in, in the air is a little bit jarring I think and maybe I don't know they, they probably could have done something to either integrate it a little bit better with the design or maybe just hide it outright in the first place because it's it does feel a little bit out of place unfortunately for the suspension I would definitely agree that they probably should have put on some teardrop shaped stuff around there like a case encasement just for the arrow because that that would have so much drag uh, what I really like is the treatment of the taillights um, and that, that's the central ones. And what I really dislike is the treatment of the taillights. Yes, I said that twice. Um, and, <laughs> and that is because those taillights that are baked into the, um, what would you even call them? Wheel arches? The extensions of the wheel arches? 
that that design there would be such an aerodynamic killer. <laughs> I mean, what would you get from that? That is just an area, just a volume that is always on vacuum. Because you have the um, the the flows, the laminar flows coming together at that point and sucking away the air from that volume that is inside the um, uh, well the, the taillight thing there. And that would always create massive amounts of drag. So that's a bit of an oversight. Maybe a little bit. I'm not 100% sure I totally agree with that, though. Um, I mean, there's, there's definitely going to be a little bit of flow separation there and some turbulence from it, maybe needlessly, but I don't think it's going to be a huge deal necessarily. But pointing out to the taillights, the thing that I don't personally care for is how they terminate on the sides of the car. It feels just like it's been hacked off and there's, there's no real elegance to it. It's just a, a straight line that ends. Then there's no, nothing else. Oh, yeah. What what am I supposed to say about this one? Uh, the future of mobility. Uh, hopefully not, <laughs> because I I wouldn't want to sit in that one. It is a box that feels extremely exposed and really um, modern in a very bad way. It is uh, basically just structural parts on the outside with some glazing in them. And it doesn't seem to be a sense of beauty in this. Uh, it's the furthest away from it I, I can imagine, really. Uh, it is well crafted for what it is. It has um, a decent amount of space in it for, for the small footprint that it has. Basically a toaster. But uh, one thing that is really odd, which I would like to ask Chris about, is the autonomous driving or not. Yeah, the complete lack thereof, it seems. You know, you'd kind of, ex especially when you look at it from the side view, the, de the decision to have a full steering wheel and instrument cluster, it really seems to cut away from the interior, like the leg room and, and passenger room, because you've got like almost the entire first quarter of this car essentially wasted it seems because you have the, the driver and the front passenger sitting more or less on the center line and then the rear passengers are basically sitting almost right over the rear axle so you've got all this space up front that's just it's not re it's not being used very well or or at all actually my first thought is when i saw this was you know how you have the little blister packs of hot wheels right rob with the car inside sure well this is a blister pack of the family of four <laughs> yeah Basically, and you would rip rip away the blister pack, swear at it because it's so hard to open, and then <laughs> and take the in, uh, what, whatever's inside, yes, and throw the blister pack away. And I think that is what I did with my scoring for this one as well. I mean, it's a creative build. It is generally well-crafted, but, you know, how hard is it to make a box with rounded corners at the end of the day? I mean, there's there's some neat little touches for sure here and there, but it's, I don't know. What I really wonder is, well, two things, two things with this design. How do you get into it? Like, really, how, how do the rear seat passengers get into this thing? I don't see any door openings or even a hint at it. Um, I can't really see how the front passengers get into it either. And then my second question is, how is any of them safe in this car? Because there is no crumple zones. It is all just structural parts. So are we in a, some kind of... Um, it, it just launches all the uh, a weird hardening paste inside that fills the whole thing and you have to <laughs> have to, to try to get out from there then? <laughs> like an all-encompassing airbag or something? I, I don't see how safety or uh, accessibility would work. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure either. It's a, uh, there is no obvious way of getting in or out of this thing, short of like, they take the sides or the roof off the car, they put the passengers in and then glue it on, like you would the, the Hot Wheels blister pack, just have it. Once you're in, you're in, that's it until you reach your destination and they, I don't know, maybe they, maybe this is like an autonomous car company or a, or a car rental company that you get sealed into the car when you rent it and when you get to your destination, they peel the roof off and you climb out that way. You have reached your extraction point, <laughs> literally. <laughs> In this case, literally, yes. 
Now this I think is a really nice thing to see right next to the previous one. Because it does keep the charm of the mobility that the other one was lacking. It still has character even though it's a very simple thing. It's just four wheels, little bubble on top, two seats inside, but quite tastefully done. And it doesn't struggle with its overarching concept. Maybe apart from the thing of trouble of getting in because we don't really see how that's working. But maybe this thing opens up completely somehow, oh, we don't know. Um, but here, definitely, the steering wheel is not a steering wheel. <laughs> it's, it's so nicely done. It's just a nav set and you don't have to interact with it. Uh, you can just put in your destination, it seems like. And I do quite like the interior with the, the wooden trim and so on. It gives it a, a little bit of warmth. And I think that is very much missing from some of those futuristic designs. Yeah, I agree with the sentiment about the interior making this feel like a very warm and inviting place. Um, especially with cars being, you know, this this concept being very autonomous and very, very robot-like. It needs to have kind of a, it needs to be more inviting than than average, I would say, for people to, to find it an appealing thing to want to get into and, and ride around in. I'd also like to point out that from a literal perspective, it's probably a very warm interior because there is no real discernible measure of giving any kind of shade to the the occupants at all. So riding around in this thing on a hot summer day in you know a very sunny tropical city might be kind of uncomfortable, I think, even with really good air conditioning, I think. Well, the air conditioning that you don't have, because do you see any kind of venting in this one on the outside? I bet you don't, because I haven't found any. I haven't seen any either. There, I mean, there might be something underneath it, but... That would be a really weird place to put vents. Yeah, especially when you <laughs> when you have the AC on full blast and you park over some some gully or something <laughs> while you're waiting for the traffic lights to turn, and <laughs> or the the worst smell in the world comes up <laughs> to it. But yes, yeah. uh, I think this would indeed be um, a little too hot. Yes, but uh, it's an overall it's nicely designed and I think it's just quite charming. Yeah, the amount of work that's gone into this, especially with all the very intricate little 3D fixture details, like the text of, in the, that's not really a grill so much as it's a, almost like an advertising sign, you know, where it says currently self-driving and, and also that you can see in the sat nav panel that every one of those things is an in, in, individually placed fixture and individually colored. So there was a lot of work that went into this to make just really small, subtle details. But I think the effect is it really makes us feel like a believable concept. Now that is a pretty sleek design. It is very simple, but quite effective. As you spin it around towards the rear, we see that um, it is using the same trick of that light bar across the rear. Seems to be uh, going pretty well. And I think this rear view is actually quite attractive. It is minimalistic but it does have good shapes to it and here definitely the, the um, lower diffuser there does fit the style of car so it seems to be a bit of a sports coupe um, electrified May maybe even hybrid because it does fit an engine <laughs> and it, at the front I'm not sure if I do like the harsh shapes from the headlights just terminating with that super strong edge. And otherwise, every shape that we have along the front is nicely rounded. And what do you think? Yeah, that's my initial thought is that the shaping that's been done at the body here, especially you can see it from the front three quarter view where there's been some pretty extensive but very subtle 3D fixture work on the, the nose of this thing. It's, it's actually very nicely done. But with the way that the headlights terminate, especially in comparison with the rear, doesn't feel particularly consistent like you'd expect i would expect at minimum to have sort of a similar light bar across the entire front of this this entry because it's it feels like there's something missing between the headlights and it, the design kind of suffers a little bit because of it but yeah generally overall it's very nicely done very nicely crafted 
the a lot of the work that's been done to this, and there is a lot of it, has is very subtle, but it just kind of adds to the, the the sleek minimalistic approach that's been taken here. From the straight front view, I also think that the hood is almost a little too flat looking. And that is might be a missed opportunity. I wouldn't know what the solution to it is, but I think um, that would address what you pointed out, that it's li a little empty looking there in the middle. Now, if there was some molding going on um, on the hood as well, that that kind of criticism would start to disappear. I don't know what exactly, what shape that would take, but seeing how much the sides are carefully molded, um, I think there's something missing there. I do like the uh, large sunroof uh, approach there. And also looking into, into the interior, that it all seems quite fitting. Yeah, I generally agree. Although I am going to point out that the while I like the idea of the sunroof, the way it's implemented here is a little bit lazy, perhaps. It is it is just one fixture slapped on the roof, which is, I mean, it's a valid way of going about it. But I think the choice of fixture, it's especially the way it's shaped with regards to where the, the sunroof terminates at the front of the car, it feels a little bit haphazard. I would have thought that certainly for a car like this, it would be, you'd almost see the whole roof just very subtly without the, the, the border between the sunroof and, and the roof structure. Um, I think you, I'd probably want to see that have not actually be there. So it was maybe a bit of a missed opportunity how they did that. Now that you pointed out, I can see that it is sticking out at different angles in a weird way, like the um, three-quarter back view is beautiful, I think. And then as you spin it around, especially as pure side view, it's just like, oh, those shapes don't fit. <laughs> but, yes. A little roadster. Yo, oh, yes. Three-seater. That's a um, good seating arrangement. But um, th then... I think there, there's a, some, some parts have gone missing there. Something is floating. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's like front design, all good. And then straight rear. Looks interesting, but very unfitting. <laughs> oh, what, is, what has happened here? Yeah, it's hard to say what's happened here. You know, maybe the engine has just not appeared and when the photographs are taken or not. But... I think even with the engine in place, this would feel very unfinished. There's a lot of details here that just they just aren't there. Like I can't see any discernible tail lights. I can't see any discernible bumper structure. There's there's just a lot of things that aren't present, and this design really kind of suffers from that, unfortunately. I also really don't know and what I think about the the vents up top, where the on, on either side behind the the two passengers the way they're angled the shapes that are going on it, it just doesn't really fit with the rest of the car which is extremely sleek extremely minimalist and in places relatively well done but i think some of the, the choice of shapes is maybe a bit i don't know they don't really fit together very well and especially around the, the what's going on between the wheels down low there's some some strange choices yeah, what what is even going on with the wheels? How are they attached? Uh, I just think I see the the brake rotors and then uh, like half of the actual rims. How, how do they even work? Maybe via futuristic magic. I don't think they invent magic in 12 years though. Not not sure. Um, regarding that little vent, I noticed that for the first time right now and. I think in the, from the straight front view, what really would work for this one, that would feel quite elegant, uh, with the correct color choice for them, would be one of these, but central and straight, and maybe a little bit larger, and a little bit lower profile. Um, because the, the engine that isn't there somehow needs to breathe, and yeah, so those vents would be accomplishing that, but um, this is indeed a little little odd angled and, and weird. It just doesn't doesn't make for a good look. And then of course the disappearing glass on <laughs> uh, the one sided material bug there um, for for the look. That is that is not great either. 
Yeah, I agree with that. If that vent was centralized, maybe a little bit taller and a fair bit wider so that the the actual vent elements were sort of centered between the, the driver and passenger, that would have worked a whole lot better instead of what's gone on here. When I see this car, the first thing that comes to mind is it should be called the Maw. When you look at it from the front, this is looking like it's going to to suck in um, way, way larger things than it should. And mm, the front design feels clunky to me, but as you spin it around, it offers more and more interesting shapes and features. And then from the rear, this is proper like sports car look there. And uh, the weird lighting on the diffuser makes it look way more prominent than it actually is. As you can see from the three quarter rear view, it is not that um, overbearing, but it still is supposed to hint at a really high performance car. And not a fan of those wheels, how they have been treated, especially not in the rear. That feels clunky. What do you think? Yeah, this is definitely a really beefy design for sure, especially when you look at it from the front three quarter view. This just feels like my first thought when I looked at this was this is a slab of granite that has been shaped to look like a car. It looks like it weighs about 10,000 pounds or 4,500 kilograms if you're of the metric persuasion. It just looks hefty, especially when you start looking at the interior and how the seats feel like they're very, they're set deep inside and, and far in and far inset from from the body where like this this thing feels enormous it also kind of feels as I, I mentioned in my judging commentary it doesn't really feel like it knows what it wants to be like from the front it kind of feels a little bit prototype race car a little bit kind of even sort of like a normal car in some ways um the way that the from the side view it just gets stretched out and, and long and and very 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 low and and whatnot and from the the rear three-quarter view it feels kind of like a prototype race car especially with that gigantic diffuser in it and yet it has a four-seat interior in it so what is this car trying to be what kind of market is it pursuing you know is this a four-seat supercar is this just a a luxury family sedan that's been done up way too much i definitely agree with that uh conclusion there that you have um what i do really like is the treatment of the rear wing and how it kind of naturally appears through the shapes that have been going on with the car and then the lower lip very just such an interesting framing device there with the the tail lights um, baked into that and then the 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 wing that isn't quite a wing but more like a, a lip or extension of the bodywork is um, coming out there and it, I think it has a beautiful view to it. Um, at the same time where they, uh, in the black, the, the lines are dropping down to mirror that shape on the um, lower side and then leading towards the center, stating the concept. Um, yeah, I, I quite like that rear modeling that has been going on. How effective it would be, I uh, have my doubts about, but... Um, aerodynamically that is but uh, it's definitely a looker and there we have the boat <laughs> uh, it is um, more like a ramjet for for very fast lane roads or something I, I don't know because uh, this looks the wrong way around but at the same time, when you consider that it's a big as ram intake there at the front, then uh, yeah, that kind of works. But there are no wheels to this, so I, I don't even think this is a land vehicle, actually. Um, this is definitely not 2035, and definitely not something that you would be seeing there. But it is something that you would throw out as a design for some concept study where you dream about things, and as such, I think it does a pretty good job. I mean, the interior is stunning, and that just the immenseness of this whole design and the, the shapes is quite beautiful. And I was very skeptical even of the, the color theme here, but in some strong studio lighting, 
it, I, it has grown on me. Yeah, I actually kind of quite like the coloring. I mean, I'm not usually a big fan of copper body accents like this, but it does kind of work, especially in relation to the, the green color going on in the rest of it. But I, I tend to agree with what you said, Rob, that this is this is definitely not a 2035 concept. It feels more like a 2135 concept. And the other thing that sticks out in my mind is just the size of this thing. Like, it's huge. I mean, you've you've got the rear passengers. It feels like they're they're almost in a completely different postal code from the front passengers. Uh, that's a good two meters away. Like, butt to butt, that's probably more than two meters away even. That's immense, yes. Um, it's quite crazy. There's a lot of detail and non-detail that has gone into this. And I quite like the general flow of it. I love the uh, the branding on it, the Serenity. And the, the logo they've created for this is beautiful. And I really do not like the Ram Air intake at the front. Because that is so boxy and sharp angled that very very much collides with what we see on the rest of the design. Yeah, there's a real clash there with the intake in the front. And especially how it relates to the what I'm assuming are the headlight bar or strip or whatever that is right up above it. It just doesn't really seem to fit very well with the rest of it. It's maybe, it's probably the weakest part of the design actually is what's going on in the front. Now, I'm also not too keen on the how aggressive they were with their material choice in the front. You can see a lot of the brushing effect on, on the copper inside is it's very, very strong. Like so strong that I don't think you'd ever see a manufacturer actually do something like that because it just, it feels, it feels kind of like they, they made the metal panels, they polished them up and, and ground them down. And, and they said, well, we don't really have enough time to polish these nice and smooth. So just send it. So. I don't know, especially with, with the way that the material looks in the rest of the car, it's it's a little bit incongruous. The car, in air quotes, of course. Um, yes, I, I agree. That material choice there seems off, as, as well as the shapes. This is just super brutal looking and rough. Um, futuristic, yes, but in a completely different kind of future. So, in that sense, I think it breaks against the rest of the design. But stunning and... Very pretty, but not a car in 2035. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a great idea and great concept, but just not really 2035 appropriate. And of course, we don't really even know if it's a car or if it's a boat or if it's like a some kind of crazy futuristic air vehicle. I mean, my understanding is that is what it is, but that honestly raises almost as many questions as if this was a car. And that concludes this category. A big thanks to our guest for joining us and thank you for watching. Check out the links below and subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the competition videos.